In the last few videos, we've been looking at quorum sensing, the phenomenon where bacteria trigger changes in their behavior based on the accumulated concentration of a so-called autoinducer molecule. We looked at the three main classes of molecules that act as autoinducers, those being the acyl homoserine lactones, the modified peptides, and the autoinducer 2 boron containing molecule. In this video, we're going to look a bit more deeply at how the bacteria assemble these autoinducer molecules, because within each bacterium, there must exist pathways by which these compounds are assembled to be used as autoinducers. We're going to focus on the example of how bacteria go about assembling acyl homoserine lactones, a very common type of chemical communication signal in gram-negative bacteria such as E. coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and other common gram-negative bacteria. The final product, the acyl homoserine lactone, we see represented here on the product side of the equation. And in this acyl homoserine lactone, we have the R prime group representing just the long carbon chain that generally exists here, and sometimes it's modified with things like carbonyl groups and other groups. What we are going to see in this reaction is that to generate the acyl homoserine lactone product, what will react is a compound called s methionine or SAM for short, which is the compound shown here. This is a ubiquitous biomolecule that is found across the spectrum of life, not just in bacteria, but commonly found throughout the kingdom of, of life. So s methionine is going to react with this compound, which is going to contain the thioester group and the carbonyl group that ultimately the carbonyl group gets incorporated into the acyl homoserine lactone over here. And this R prime group is the chain. So the specific acyl carrier protein tethered thioester here would have an R group that matches what the R group of the final acyl homoserine lactone is going to be. So this chain here could be a carbon chain of generally between about three and 18 or so carbon atoms. And that's what differentiates the acyl homoserine lactones from members of different species. So depending upon what species we were looking at, the exact structure of the thioester tethered to the acyl carrier protein could differ here in the R prime group. And so that's why I've left it as R prime rather than showing a specific carbon chain length there or showing specific carbonyl groups within that R prime group. So what we will be doing in this reaction, and we're going to go through the mechanism for, is that we will be taking the acyl carrier protein tethered precursor, reacting it with s methionine to give our acyl homoserine lactone. And throughout the video, what I'm going to do is in the s methionine molecule, I'm going to abbreviate this group here as R because it does not participate directly in the reaction. Instead, the business end of the s methionine is this portion is what's going to participate directly in the reaction. So as a result, as we move onward and start looking at the mechanism for how this enzyme catalyzed reaction takes place, we're going to abbreviate this as just R. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction, we refer to as Lux I. Lux I is the enzyme that is going to force the reaction of the acyl carrier protein thioester with the s methionine to give our acyl homoserine lactone product. So let's solve the mystery here and look at how that reaction takes place. What is the step-by-step -step mechanism that goes on here? So in this step-by-step -step mechanism, following with those structures that we just looked at in the last um, bit there, I'm filling in a little bit of additional information about the enzyme Lux I that catalyzes this reaction. What we can do is draw out our starting acyl carrier protein tethered structure. The acyl carrier protein, ACP, as the name carrier there implies, its purpose is to carry these thioester tethered chains from one spot in the cell to another to enable this reaction to take place. So the acyl carrier protein tethered uh, group here is going to interact with the other reactant, the s methionine, which 
I, again, as I mentioned, I'm going to draw out just the portion of this molecule that's reactive here. So we have our s methionine with our sulfur directly bonded to a methyl group. R there is the same as what we were describing as the R group just a moment ago. And then we have the remaining portion of that s methionine molecule consisting of our carboxylic acid group. We come over to here and have an amine group. And I'm going to abbreviate one of those nitrogen hydrogen bonds there specifically. So this would be our s methionine reacting with our thioester tethered to the acyl carrier protein. In this reaction, what will occur is that the Lux I, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction, I'm going to show the enzyme schematically like this, has a base so an R group that is basic in the active site of this enzyme. And what will happen is that, that base is going to grab the proton from the nitrogen atom there, as will force the breakage of that nitrogen-hydrogen bond. And the nitrogen in this reaction is going to act as the nucleophile to come in and attack the carbonyl group here of our thioester. That forces the pi bond electrons there to go onto the oxygen, giving us the first intermediate in this reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit on that so that we can go onward and draw out the product of this step, which if you like to describe these reaction steps in words, what's happening first is that the nucleophilic nitrogen is attacking the electrophilic or positively polarized, which will put delta plus there to indicate that the carbonyl carbon is positively polarized, of the acyl carrier protein tethered, meaning linked with a covalent bond, the acyl carrier protein tethered acyl group. Where the acyl group, recall from your organic chemistry terminology, is this carbonyl with a carbon chain bond, which is what we refer to as the acyl group. And so that nucleophile is coming in, attacking the carbonyl, and that's going to give us a tetrahedral intermediate here at this carbon that originated as our carbonyl carbon. So let's go ahead and draw out that resulting intermediate. So drawing out the resulting intermediate, I put in my R group. That's the R group from right here. Following through the chain there to the carbon that was the carbonyl is now a carbon that's directly bonded to an oxygen anion. And additionally, directly bonded to the sulfur and the acyl carrier protein, ACP for acyl carrier protein. So we've drawn out the R group here, matching up with here. What was the carbonyl group becomes the carbon oxygen single bond negative charge on the oxygen. And then we still have that sulfur bonded here to the acyl carrier protein, so we connect that through. And then the additional piece here, what we've brought in, in this nucleophilic acyl addition reaction, is we've made that bond between nitrogen and our carbonyl carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in that nitrogen. The nitrogen will have one hydrogen directly bonded to it because the base catalyst here in the active site of the Lux I enzyme stole the other hydrogen from the nitrogen. So therefore we have just one hydrogen directly bonded there. And we would have a lone pair there as well for those keeping track at home. And coming along with the rest of the molecule here, the nitrogen that we see right here is then directly connected to this group, which I'm just going to redraw this whole group over here where it would be connected. So let's go ahead and draw that out. like so. Drawing in my business end of what was s methionine and is now covalently linked to the uh, acyl carrier protein tethered acyl group. So we've got in red then this portion of the structure 
over here represented as this. And then the nitrogen atom represented right here, corresponding to there. And then the rest of that structure from here, we have drawn in black right here. So this doesn't quite look like our final product just yet. So what happens next in this enzyme catalyzed reaction is that the acyl carrier protein, the ACP is released. It is broken away via breaking the carbon sulfur bond and the sp2 carbon of the acyl group is going to form. In other words, the carbonyl group will reform. So second step here, the acyl carrier protein leaves by breaking a carbon sulfur bond and the carbonyl is going to reform. So here, the way that we can look at this is our sulfur here is the most poised to leave of the leaving groups there. We can break this carbon sulfur bond to create a stable product more so than breaking this carbon oxygen bond. And as we break that sulfur atom away, in order to stabilize the resulting product here, particularly at this carbon that I'm highlighting with my laser pointer, to prevent that from being a carbocation, what we can do is bring the pi, bring the lone pair electrons down to recreate a pi bond here. And so as a result, we will obtain our sulfur that was bonded to the acyl carrier protein. And that structure is now ready to go and link to some other acyl within the cell to be recycled and reused. The acyl carrier protein is used to carry a lot of acyl groups around the cells for metabolism of a variety of different types of compounds. And then drawing out the rest of this structure here, what we have remaining, we have our R group represented right here, directly bonded to the carbonyl right here. And then the rest of this structure, I'm going to redraw in red to match what we have up top there because we haven't done anything to this portion of the molecule in red just yet. So drawing that all out, just recopying what I had in red up at the top there. We have this particular structure resulting from that. And so getting down to the home stretch here, we're still not quite to the acyl homoserine lactone yet. We need that lactone group to form here within this structure in order to get to our final product. And so the way that we go about doing that is we have our oxygen anion right here from a deprotonated carboxylic acid group. And that's is poised to come in and react with this electrophilic carbon atom right here. This particular carbon is highly electrophilic because it's bonded to the sulfur, which is relatively electronegative. Also, that sulfur has a positive formal charge on it, which makes the sulfur especially electron withdrawing. So this bond here is very heavily polarized with the carbon being very positively polarized, very electrophilic. And so that oxygen is going to come in in this enzyme catalyzed reaction. The oxygen comes in, forms a link to this carbon in an SN2 type reaction as the sulfur leaving group leaves. So we have the nucleophilic oxygen coming in and intramolecularly attacking the carbon atom here as the leaving group leaves to give that lactone group that we observe in the final acyl homoserine lactone product. So let's go ahead and draw out our product here. I'm going to show my newly created oxygen carbon bond in blue for emphasis here. So we had a new bond between oxygen and carbon. That bond corresponds to the bond that was created by this electron pushing arrow that I'm highlighting in blue over here. We would have then, of course, the two sets of lone pairs on the oxygen here and here. At the adjacent position in the ring, we have our carbonyl group because we had a carbonyl group right here. We haven't done anything to destroy that. Going around the ring, 
what we'd see then is that this ring should be five atoms in size. It's got the oxygen and then one, two, three, four carbon atoms. So that's how we come up with the five membered ring here. The sulfur atom with its R group has broken away there. So we would also have as a result of this, the methyl group that's bonded to the sulfur, the sulfur and the R group there. And now those are completely detached because we broke that covalent bond since sulfur was our leaving group here. Still connected to our lactone, we have our branch coming off here that leads to the amide group. And finally to this R group here, which is our variable portion of the structure. And I really should um, be calling that, if I want here, um, we could call that R prime to represent that, to show that these two are the same here and here. So this gives us our final acyl homoserine lactone product in this reaction where the total reaction is catalyzed by this enzyme Lux I through aligning the acyl carrier protein tethered acyl group with acetinosylmethionine and providing residues that are properly aligned to give protonation and deprotonation steps as needed, such as the Lux I here acting as a base to deprotonate and get the process going underway. And for those that like labeling the steps with a descriptor, I should put in that step three here is the step where the oxygen nucleophile, specifically the oxygen anion nucleophile, is going to attack the electrophilic carbon that is bonded to sulfur to form the lactone in this intramolecular reaction, giving us our final product of this enzyme catalyzed reaction catalyzed by Lux I. And so Lux I, depending upon exactly which gram negative acyl homoserine lactone using bacteria we're looking at, Lux I will recognize a different set of acyl carrier protein tethered groups here in order to install different R groups ultimately into the final acyl carrier protein, um, into the final acyl homoserine lactone product of this reaction. So we generate our final acyl homoserine lactone out of this reaction. And now that we've explored the mechanism by which the acyl homoserine lactones are formed, what we are going to do in the next video is look at how those acyl homoserine lactones are emitted into their environment and then received by nearby cells in order to trigger the variety of responses to these autoinducer molecules. In other words, we're going to look at the chemoreception of acyl homoserine lactones and how that ultimately triggers massive changes in the behavior, such as triggering the formation of biofilm, triggering bioluminescence, and others.